Hey y'all, this is Kobe R. Rice, back again, not with a creative weekly update, with, with some insights or perspective. I don't know if it's actually insightful, we'll see, um, on the current Nicki Minaj fiasco um, in terms of the cover that recently premiered on paper, mag for Paper Magazine. And um, I guess I'm gonna put this video under unapologetically melanated media crit, which I suppose is like a channel that I have now or like a, play a playlist that I run now. Anyway, so um, I'm just gonna tell you guys very briefly why I'm not mad at all at um, Nicki Minaj's very racy, risque cover. Um, and it might not necessarily be for the reasons you might think. Um, I'm not really one of these girls out here that necessarily believes that every single grab at sexual exposure automatically equals empowerment. Um, I think I like to take those things on a case by case basis. And that's not because I'm really like a slut shamer or anything like that. I personally believe that if a woman feels liberated to, you know, expose herself, bear her body, um, embrace her body, love her body, have multiple partners, do whatever, like do you boo. I'm not judging you at all. Go do you. You have one life to live. Life is short. Do you. Um, I'm very much like laissez-faire when it comes to that, especially because I prefer that um, other people leave my life alone, <laughs> just in general. Like, I don't like being told what to do, thus I don't generally like to tell what other people should be doing. Um, but, so I'm not one of these chicks that's like, oh yeah, she feels empowered to like, you know, bust it open on the cover and like have this, ra have this racy menage a trois with like herself. Um, and that's liberating, you know, that's pushing forward feminism. I don't think it really does anything for feminism. I think it does a lot for like Nicki Minaj in terms of getting that cover out and so, you know, quote unquote, breaking the internet and making her a crap load of money. Um, and for that reason, you know, I kind of feel like it's really none of my business. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of cray cray because this is a cover that's sort of out in public and, um, you know, I'm an adult, so I can I have the wherewithal to decide what I'm going to be influenced by for the most part, and what I'm not going to be influenced by. Um, I have the wherewithal to say, okay, that's great for you, Nikki. Do you? That's not really my style. Um, and then like sort of walk away from the situation unscathed, right? So I have that sort of uh, opportunity and privilege. A lot of you might argue, on the other hand, that you know Nicki Minaj is, even if she doesn't want to be, is a role model, and so she needs to like be careful as to how she presents herself and how she, um, you know, uh, basically presents her role as a woman in society, as a very influential, powerful, you know, very popular, very now, you know. Um, wealthy maybe not i don't know if she's like wealthy wealthy but she has money and she has um an international profile so people are saying that you know she should be very aware of how she's impacting um you know not just the masses but like the youth in particular and um so with all these things out there oh she's pushing forward feminism she needs to watch herself because people are watching her like this is what i think about the Nicki minaj thing um one i don't see the same kind of, and this might not be a comparable situation to you guys, but um, I think that we should start to like try to have similar rules for men as we do for women. Like what I've been seeing recently in like the Me Too campaign, all the exposure of all these celebrities who are like sexually abusive, sexual predators, rapists, and whatnot. Um, you know, these things have been allowed to go on and still go on, but these things have been going on in our media for a very long time. And everybody has been completely fine with being complicit in all of these indiscretions that are committed by men. But the moment that Nicki Minaj or any other woman for that matter comes out in the open and basically is telling you who she is, telling you what she's about, being very open and honest about it, we feel empowered to like try to break her down and destroy her. And that's not to say that we should privilege, you know, one indiscretion over another. And I'm not trying to equate exp exposing your body to like rape. Please don't, you know, please don't get that impression. But like, I feel like we do a lot of work to, you know, help men along 
in terms of like their growth, their development, or even we're complicit in a lot of their very violent acts against sexuality, against, you know, women's bodies. But when we have a woman out here owning her body, somehow we have to like very explicitly come out and go after her. And so I'm not really here for that. Um, I think we need to really sit back and understand um, what our biases are in terms of like sexuality and sexual ownership and like check ourselves a little bit. Um, I think that especially in this day and age, if a woman can feel empowered enough to own her body, to decide when she's going to put it out there and, and expose it to people, um, I feel like that is, to a certain degree, a step forward considering how many women are being held back behind the scenes by all these power players in media who are trying to use their bodies against them. So I'm not quite making the feminist argument that like all ownership of sexuality is empowering, but in this particular context with our, you know, with what's going on in the media right now, y'all need to sit all the way down um, because we're out here basically caping for all these gross ass men who are um, basically hurting men and women, you know, across the board. But then we want to slam a woman who actually owns her body and um, can monetize it in whatever way she wants. And I just think we need to like just readjust our priorities um, or if we're going to critique people, we should make the critique standardized across the board. That's just one thing. Um, secondly, I'm hearing a lot of uh, women in the industry coming out after Nicki Minaj talking about how it's degrading and empowering. And one particular critique that stood out to me was the one made by Eve, the rapper, who I love and adore. Like, I've always loved her music. I've always loved her, her brand. Um, even when she was raunchy with it, I mean, can we just keep that really real? I'm about to go in on you just a teeny tiny bit. Eve, not too much because it's not like, you know, Eve is running around here trying to like be the patron saint of, you know, virginity and chastity. But she did go on the talk the other day, I believe it might have been yesterday actually, and talk about how she felt um, about Nicki Minaj's cover. And basically she felt as though like essentially it wasn't right. And um, even though she, she, Nicki Minaj might have not asked to be a role model, she is a role model and she needs to take that into consideration. Um, and to that, I respond, Eve, like, and you own, she owns this, Eve completely owns this, but like, it was all good for like, I don't know, the five years, and I'm not trying to be insulting, but I don't remember how exactly long her career lasted, like the five to 10 years that she was on and popping as a rapper, it was completely fine for her to use her body and her sexuality in the way, in, in, in whatever way she saw fit to make that paper, to make her brand, and to make a name for herself. And when she was done with that, when she was done stacking her paper, when she was done, you know, being young and wild and out, and she got more mature and older, she then pulled back. She became like, you know, a family woman. Not saying that she wasn't before, but, you know, on the surface, like, it looked like we were going from, like, you know, straight up, gorgeous, you know, hood gangster chick to like, you know, Susie Homemaker with like an edge. Um, that's at least what it looks like on the surface. And nobody was mad. You know, I mean, I was happy when Eve decided to like get out the rap game and settle down and chill. Not because I felt as though she was better suited for that, but because like that was her choice. Like she wanted to do it. She made her money. Now it's time for her to settle down in her view. And she's doing what she wants. And I felt... Like that was a very empowering decision on both sides. But now Nicki Minaj is doing the same thing you did, Eve, except she's more out there. Like Nicki Minaj, she got the titties out, she got the coochie popping or whatever. And, um, you know, it is looking kind of crazy. She is looking, you know, really intense. She looks good, but she looks kind of crazy. Um, and she is in that same phase that you were in when you were out there, you know, very much owning your sexuality, very much, you know, making money off of that plus your, plus your talent. And Nicki Minaj is essentially not doing anything any different, um, any differently than most female rappers before her that are in her vein. And I'm not talking about Lauren Hill or whatever, because that's not Lauren Hill's brand. I'm talking about, you know, straight up like rap, you know, booty out, you know, booty shaking hip hop, you know, the one that talks about owning your, owning your, owning your pussy essentially. And like 
getting that money and bad bitches or whatever. Like in that vein of bad bitchdom, she is doing, she's following the recipe. The recipe that Eve herself, as well as Foxy Brown, as well as Little Kim, have laid out for her because they came before her. And so this is not to say that it's right. But why can't she make her money in the game and then suddenly become Susie Homemaker 10 years down the line when she needs to change her brand up? Why does she have to come out and go against the grain, which in my opinion, Little Kim, Foxy Brown, Eve, you know, all those like sex rappers or whatever, quote, sex rappers, they didn't feel the need to go against the grain when they were out making their money and making their paper. So why are we suddenly saddling Nicki Minaj with the responsibility, with the moral responsibility of like raising this new generation of young girls? Um, You got, I mean, I feel as though it's kind of basically the same shit, different day, but with like better Photoshop tools, you know? Um, because whoever was doing the artwork on that cover really just freaking killed it. I mean, he, he or she just destroyed that cover in terms of like, just like the work that was done, the composition of being able to put all three Nikki's together and make it look realistic. Like he did, he or she did a damn good job in terms of like the craftsmanship. Um, so I, I, you know, to me, it's just like, I've grown up watching all these female rappers kind of come and go, make their money, make their paper, retire, and then do something different. And Nicki Minaj is going to do the same thing. So how about we just stop being on our high horse and really own the fact that what makes us uncomfortable is that, or what makes you uncomfortable is that you're looking at essentially an updated image of the same things that you used to do and the same things that you used to be. And own that part and then allow Nicki Minaj to have her own character arc, to have her own emotional growth, to have her own, you know, whatever throughout her career. Um, also having said that, no offense again to Eve, cause she's like one of my favorites ever, but I don't ever really recall any of these criticizing female rappers, like giving scholarships and giving money to their fans to like uplift the community. So you know, her image might not necessarily elevate the black woman to the status of like, you know, St. Mary or whatever, or whatever saint you want to put out there. Um, But her actions in terms of like actual fiscal responsibility to her community certainly are elevating us. And so um, I don't remember Little Kim or Foxy Brown or even Eve doing anything like that. I mean, now that's not to say that that is not done that they didn't do it but there was no publicity around it i did not see these female rappers using their media platforms at all to um say hey yo if you if you're going to college or you got student loan debt i got you you know what i'm saying like i just don't remember that when i was growing up so um let's just give Nicki minaj a break let's just you know let's let her make her money and for those of you at home who are clutching your pearls and or who are afraid that your children are watching this and are, you know, being influenced by by it, um, be a better parent. You know, I mean, I and I hate saying that because, again, I don't like criticizing and judging people and their parenting styles. But if your household is not um, or rather, if you're not integrated enough with your household to be able to control the kind of media that your children are consuming um, and to be a more positive influence on your children than like a magazine cover, then there's a problem. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily all your fault as a parent. There are infrastructural and institutional issues that go into the time and the effort that one is able to put in as a parent. Take take it from me as a single black mother. I know your struggle, like your struggle and then some. Um, and so, but there's at least not at this point in my, in my life because my daughter's relatively young. There is no world in which Nicki Minaj's Minaj a trois cover is going to have more influence on my young daughter's mind than me because I'm going to be in control of what she consumes. I'm going to be in control of the narrative and the conversation that comes out of said media and I'm going to be engaged. So 
while I do believe it's important to realize that Nicki Minaj is a really important role model, you, you should also realize that you are the most important role model for not only your family and your children, but your community. And, you know, again, I'm not saying that this should uh, necessarily open the floodgates of like pee popping, you know, pussy popping covers or whatever. Um, you know, I think that can get a little bit old and can really, um, shall we say, dull the impact of su- of such a thing. Um, but if one risky, racy cover comes out, like it shouldn't shake our world that much if our world is grounded in real shit. If we have, um, you know, like a cultural and educational plan uh, and that, that we have in place for ourselves, our children and our community, if we have, if we're building our wealth, if we're teaching our children about becoming civically engaged and becoming financially stable and, um, you know, and responsible, if we're teaching our children the things that they need to know about, like critical race theory, class theory, if we're like actively being involved in our children's lives in the ways that are necessary, um, things like this, in my opinion, should be more blips on the radar as opposed to like hurricanes in the bay you know what i'm saying so um and i will acknowledge too that i'm coming from a a perspective of privilege and this is not to pat myself on the back at all but in terms of the fact that like you know i'm a grad student i was lucky enough to grow up with a mom who is super super invested in my education and who was very very Um, invested in controlling the kinds of media that came into our house and whatever kinds of media that was coming into our house um you know we were having dialogue around it and and things like that um we also actually spent most of our time with family and doing family things and events like with the extended family and not really so much in front of the tv all the time um for me personally i was always a really big reader so from like the ever since i could read maybe like age six or seven my nose has been like firmly in a book Um, so like I had those advantages growing up and not everybody has the time or the money or the support that they need to provide those advantages for their children or to even give those advantages to themselves. But I still think that we still need to be, um, actively engaged, critical consumers of what we are looking at. And that doesn't mean just lambasting and, and, you know, finger shaking at the media portrayals that are not positive, but it also means putting those portrayals into a dialogue that makes sense and that will push forward understanding of women's sexuality and empowerment in the community or lack thereof. Um, so in conclusion, relax. It's just a magazine cover. If you don't like it, put it back on the shelf or close the laptop or whatever. Let Nikki make her money. Nikki is working very much within her brand. It's not as though she was putting out this brand of being a clean Susie homemaker, Betty Crocker artist, and then suddenly busted out with, you know, naked, naked body shots and titties and ass and all. She's, this is not outside of her brand. It's kind of like me announcing to the world, hey guys, I have another sci-fi novel out. Y'all are like, okay, yeah, like. Of course you have another out because you're a sci-fi novelist. It's like, for me, I'm looking at this cover like, of course Nicki did this cover. It's Nicki fucking Minaj. Like, she's not going to do a cover pretending as though she's like, you know, like the homegrown, you know, again, Betty Crocker chick. Um, And who knows? Like, she might actually be that person. Like, I'm not even making a judgment on who she is. But I know what Nicki Minaj's brand is. And y'all need to start acting like y'all know it too. So, like, that's all I have to say. Nikki, go make your money. Um, You know, make these haters mad. Just keep making them mad until you're done getting your money. And then go, like, start a charity and, you know, philanthropic program uh, for the empowerment of young women. And, like, go have a nice fucking day and go get your life. Peace. That's all I have to say. Bye. (laughs)